Hello everyone, today we are going to be going over how to hack with the AmLogic drivers. This is going to be a alternative method to these super bro tools and will hopefully be a lot more reliable on Windows machines. Yes, unfortunately, while this way is faster and potentially more reliable, it only works on Windows. Expect a Linux update here soon, but I don't currently have Linux on my computer so I can't make a dedicated tutorial to it. But that being said, let's jump straight into things. This is going to be a lot simpler. In the description of the video, there should be two links. The first one goes to the Zadig download page, and the second one goes to the Thingify tools page. You're going to want to open up both of those, and then also open up File Explorer and make a new folder somewhere. This can be in your documents, your downloads, your C drive, but it just has to be a place to keep everything in one spot. We are going to, I mean, that's it. That's that's everything that we need. So we're going to start by downloading a couple things and then we can get into configuring the car thing to get it to the point of being able to flash it. So opening up Zadig, we're going to want to go to downloads and then download the latest. Make sure you save that into the directory that you wanted and we can hit save. All right, now go over to the Thingify tools and go to bundled installers. Keep in mind, this name and icon will probably change down the road, but until then, this is what it is going to be for now. You may have to click around the website just a little bit to find it, but the process should be the same once you do. You're going to go to versions and then to this latest version right here. Hit the right arrow to go to all of the downloads and you can see that we have windowsbundled.zip. Oh, uh, we can just go download right here, and then that should download into the folder that we previously used. I would save this and start the download process, however, due to technical limitations, my internet speed is actually crap right now, and this would take roughly four hours. So, I'm going to skip this process, but you should download this just like any other file. Once it downloads, uh, I'm going to just copy and paste it from my personal files. Uh, once it downloads, you should see it in here, just like so. And you can just right click this and click extract all. Then just click enter and we can give it a second. And while that is loading, we can switch back over to the real world. Okay. So let's figure out what to do with our car thing itself. Uh, you can see right here, I have a car thing device and it says the welcome to car thing, uh, kind of happy little logo. So let's start to getting this thing ready to be used. Um, first thing is to unplug it just like that. And we want to plug it back in. Before we do, um, look at the top, there are a couple buttons. They are numbered one, two, three, four, and M. We want to click buttons one and four. So I'm going to hold it just like this. It's the easiest way I found. And then plug it in like so. All right, with that plugged in, we know that it worked because the windows made the connect sound, but the screen is currently off just like so. Um, a few things to note is I have this plugged in to a powered USB hub that is then plugged into my computer via USB-C. Uh, this is also powered by USB-C just to give it as much power as possible. During the flashing process, um, it needs very, very reliable power and it shouldn't be touched during the process. I have nothing else plugged into my computer beyond these two and then a few other very low power devices. So I'm going to flip this over just so you can see it and we're going to switch back over to the computer. You can see over here, um, it is finished installing and we can just go ahead and open up the Zadig application that we downloaded. And this will just take a second. There we go. And here we are. Okay. We want to click options, list all devices, and then in this drop down, click GX chip, just like so. We then want to click edit right here. And this is really important. Name this World Cup device, just like so. And make sure you have the capitalization here perfect. Um, has to be exactly that. It's very case specific and it's the only reason why this method works. We then want to click the down arrow here until this one says libusb win32. Other drivers will not work. It has to be this driver. Okay, we're going to click reinstall device. 
and this will just take a little bit as it reinstalls and reinitializes it reinitializes the device. Um, while we wait, I'm going to hit Windows and then look up Device Manager. We can run that. And we can look for our device over here. Um, once this finishes, it should update what the device is. So now we just play the waiting game. Okay, the device uh, driver has been installed correctly. We can hit close. You'll see that this name resets back to GX chip. That is fine. As long as in task manager, we're going to go um, just like this and scan for hardware changes just to refresh everything. There we go. So there should be this uh, libusb Win32 device and the name should be World Cup device with a capital W and capital C. Okay, we're going to minimize this and minimize that. And then we don't need Google anymore so we can close that as well. Now back over here, we're going to just open up that file that we extracted and you should see a flash.bat. The flash.powershell will not always work. So we want this flash.bat. If this is not showing up, you have to go view and then hit show and then show um, file name extensions. That way we can see Ooh, there we go. Uh, that way we can see this .bat file. Okay, now th this next step is going to be really complicated. We just have to double click the batch file. It will open up the terminal and it will start flashing. That is it. No more Python, no more installing things, just this and we are off to the races. If I scroll up just a little bit, you can see um, the version that I'm using along with the instructions written out, along with a few um, different things that you can try if it does not work the first try. Okay, scrolling back down, you can see it is starting to do the flashing process. This will go through every single one of the files and download them. Uh, you may find that the data file fails and the setting file fails, but that is okay as those files are not needed. We can just ignore those errors and then move on. Um, it should get to the very end without saying it's missing the device or that it can't find the device. If it does either of those, you'll just have to unplug the car thing, hold the two buttons, plug it back in, and then try this again. Um, a few other things that can go wrong here is if you're running an AMD 5000 series chip, it may end up failing. And that is because there's an outstanding issue with the AMD 5000 series. AMD has been notified of it and there's a few articles online about them potentially coming up with a fix. But in the meantime, you can either try a different computer, you can try to upload, like update your BIOS, or a few people have found um, just kind of messing around with it long enough can eventually get it to work. Um, we are working on a fix for that, but there's not a very good one. So we're just going to let this finish downloading uh, and it will just run in the background for a little bit. And I do plan on having the video go just to show you how fast this flash is because it's quite remarkable. So a few other things that you can try if it's not working is um, first thing is always try a different cable, try a different cable, try a different port because uh, power is a really essential part to this process. Um, if you if the car thing loses power at any point, it will cause it to be not detected by your device and it will cause it to fail. Uh, the second thing is if you are on a laptop, make sure that your performance mode is set to high performance. Oh, there we go. Um, high performance will just give more power to the USB, making it more likely to succeed. Okay, so that's it. So we now have, um, it flashed. This is the entire process. We're done. So going back to the real life world right here, we're just going to go back to the car thing, unplug it, plug it back in, and you will see the lovely Thing Labs show up. This means that it has been successfully flashed and that everything is in working order. One thing to note is we are still running the stock car thing operating system on there. We've enabled ADV, but the car thing is still running. So that will still be what eventually boots into it. Uh, 
which is normal, is expected. But if you're wanting to use something like desk thing or glance thing, this is the state that we need it in in order for it to work. So that is everything for the tutorial. You can click off now, continue your other tutorial, and be on your way. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time to clarify a few things. Uh, the first one is ADB. ADB is a little bit annoying to set up. So I'm just going to show that process really quick. Uh, we want to find ourselves over by the um, ADB download page on um, the Android portal, just like this. And we will see uh, if you can get away this download it here button and that should bring you to uh, these downloads portal we can download for windows accept the terms and conditions i have read all of those and then just wait for this to finish throw this into that folder that we were using before and then we can extract that here Okay, just like so. If we open up that folder, uh, we will see that there is a adb.exe inside of there. Now I want to hit Windows, search environment variables, and hit enter. Hit environment variables to open up this menu, and then we have our variables for the user and then the system variables. Under the system variables, we want to find path, just like so. We're going to click edit. And then we have all of these. Uh, yours will probably not be this plentiful, but mine is because I have a lot of things on here. We want to click this top bar, Control C to copy, and then over here, click new to add a new entry, and then Control V. You can see that this path matches the path that you have that in, and then we'll hit OK. Um, what that does is now, if we open up a new terminal, we can type ADB, and you can see that it has a response. So if we go ADB devices, look at that. We have a device that verifies that the ADB device is successfully detected and is showing up. If it is showing anything else, try the things as before, um, especially with the um, AMD 5000 series cards. But if this is showing up, then you are in good working order and everything is going to plan. All right, that is okay. One thing to add really quick that I forgot to include is if things are just not working and it feels like everything is breaking and your car thing is restarting and it's not like loading to that World Cup device, keeps on going back to the lib USB-K, that is because you installed too many drivers. So something went wrong. All you have to do is right click your device, click properties, go to drivers and then click uninstall device. You want to say attempt to remove the driver for this device and then hit uninstall. That will reload and once once it does, uh, you'll find that your device is um, showing up uh, somewhere, usually. Um, but most importantly, it should remove that driver. Uh, you want to unpl unplug your car thing and then plug it in again, um, just like that. And then uh, we can see, okay, there we go. We're back to our World Cup device. Um, if it keeps on showing up as something else, uh, just keep on uninstalling that driver because you could have any number of them installed. So keep on repeating that. Right click, properties, driver, uninstall device, um, accept. Yep, keep on doing that until you can go to um, details and this is World Cup device. And you can go to driver details and see that this driver is the one that is installed. Um, really important, will not work unless you try that. Alright, that has been all for the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all later.